Hey guys, my name is Ali and I am a data analytics manager working in Oslo, Norway. Today I'm going to show you how to create a customer overview dashboard in Power BI. I have added the data set in the description so you can download that and follow along if you would like to do that. The concepts that we will go through are understand the data and determine what to focus on, loading data into Power BI and perform some data cleanup, create measures, calculate the columns and look at the DAX functions that are used in this process, create dashboard with necessary visualizations. So let's get to work. So this is the dashboard that I want us to recreate together. Now, as you can see, it is a customer overview dashboard. So it is based on some customer data and we have a data set with quite a few different attributes about the customer. Um, I have also um, uh, created some buckets and some uh, calculated columns that are also very useful um, when you want to uh, visualize some data. But you know, a quick overview, um, we have uh, data about a bunch of different customers, you know, 2,231 customers. We know what is their education type. If they have kids, if they have teens. Um, I have created some age buckets because I know how old they are. I have created some income buckets because I know what they make. And I've also created, um, I think this is by recency, how long ago is it that they bought something from us um, according to the data set. Um, I've added some slices on the left side. I've tried to be consistent with the colors. And then I also have, you know, a small icon there. So what we'll do, we'll start off by looking at the data and then we will just move through um, recreating this, uh, this dashboard. Um, so the first thing, you know, a quick overview of the data. We have a customer ID. We know when they are born. So because of that, we can, you know, we can derive how old they are. Um, you know, what kind of education do they have? Are they married? What is their income? Do they have kids, teens? Um, I believe this is the date that they bought something um, the last time, or is it when they became customer? I'll figure that out. And then maybe recency is maybe how many days ago they bought something. Date customer is how long they have been with us. I believe that's how it was. Um, so this is the data. This is the data set that you should be finding in the description. And, you know, when I see this data and I think about customer overview, I want an overview of the customer base. Um, I know that I need to count the ID because that will give me a unique count of number of customers. And the rest I can use as attributes to show different things about our customer base and also enable whoever wants to know more about our customers to be able to filter and work with the data about the customers and filter and slice that in a lot of different ways. Um, so as always, when we are looking to create something like this, we got to start with the first step and that is to get the data into the solution. So let's do that. So I will create a new, a new, uh, new Power BI file. And then I'll probably have to refer a little bit back and forth as we go, but uh, hopefully it won't be too much. And hopefully you guys can follow along if you want to do that. Um, so we'll start by loading in the, the spreadsheet and then we got to correct some stuff. We got to get the, 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 the data types correct and then we can start to work with it. So I'm going to go to go to Excel workbook and I will find the spreadsheet that we just took uh, looked at. Um, and when I load that in, it's going to you know tell me to select the spreadsheet and then I will start to create some um, set some data types. So I will uh, go to um, transform data. It will open up Power Query and that is where you can use transformations in Power BI. Um, so let's look at that. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that the, uh, the the first row is the header because I can see it's not picking up anything now. So let's do that first. After that, I'll start to change a couple of things around. Um, I'll make the ID um, field to a whole number, the year of birth. I want to use that for some logic later. So that's to be a whole number. So I can use it in a calculated column education i'll make the text marital status i'll make make the text income we can make it to a fixed decimal numbers as you usually use that for currencies kids at home and teen at home i'm going to make those true false because they are one or zero um, and the date customer i think i'm going to look a little bit at that later but i want to make it into a date field recency i'll make to a whole number now, um, I might actually rename um, some of these. So this is, instead of ID, I will rename this to customer ID. Just give it 
some names that I think is a little bit better. And we'll call it birth year. Education is fine, marital status is fine. I want to remove the underscore. Uh, and then income, okay, fine. I'll make this one kid home underscore flag because it's, a, it's like a one zero field. I like to make those into flag fields. Um, teen home underscore flag. And I'll make this one, I can't remember what I called it, but I call it, I'll, I'll call it customer join date. Uh, and then recency is purchase. Okay, so now we've, uh, we've done some renaming and I am pretty much happy so far. I will close and apply that and that will take the data into Power BI and it will uh, load it with the different changes that I have done now. Um, so this looks good. Like I said, customer join date, data type text. Let me try this date. Um, which is, you know, this is another place where you can do it. I'm going to go OK. And I want to set the format. Let's just set it to short date for now. It's fine. And, and after you've made these kind of changes, you can take a look here. You can see there's just a data view. You can take a look there to see what it looks like now. So if we go in, it looks good. Notice also, you know, small detail, but text. It's aligned on the left side, values, um, and flags, integers on the right side. So if you ever wonder, you know, what kind of type is the column, most likely if it's a text, it's it's aligned on the left side. If it's an, something integer based, it's on the right side. But okay, um, I've created the columns. If we refer back, you can see there's a couple, you know, I have some calculated columns and I have a, uh, a calculation we can start with the calculation and the main calculation in this dashboard is number of customers uh, and the order I usually do it I usually load the data in I create the calculations and then I start to build and play around so let's do that um, so we go back to this one I'm going to right click this new measure and then we want you know we want to know how many customers do we have per a lot of different how can I call this points of view or categories? We need to count something uh, and to count unique customer, you can count customer ID. So if you do uh, number of customers, this is DAX. So if you don't know that, um, you need to look into that very, very, <clears throat> very useful in Power BI equals. We're going to use the distinct count function. I'm going to point it to customer ID. Great. And just for the sake of formatting, I will put one down, line down. And when that is done, I get this new type of column with a calculator. You know, we have some text stuff. Actually, that's a date, so that's a bad example. That's text. We have something which is value-based, which gets the sigma. And then we have measures, which gets the, the calculator. Great, we have that. So already we can drag out a card or a KPI, as I like to call them. Uh, that comes out there. I drag the number of customers. It's supposed to hit number of customers. There we are. And already, you know, we have something that we can start to play around with. We have number of customers. I can swap this to a bar chart. I drag education to the axis. Now we have number of customers per education type. So, you know, we're, we're already getting somewhere. So let's do that. I will remove this. And this is the main calculation that we're going to use. I use the distinct count function for this. Just for the sake of you to know it, we could have done, if you use the values function, customer ID, that's going to give you a, un, a column with the unique lists in the, actually a table with, uh, with one column with the unique list of those. Then you can use another function around it called if I can type it right, count rows. Count the rows in a table with one column which has the unique values of customer ID. Drag that out, put it into card. Same 
amount of uh, customers. So great. Um, I'll stick to this, the distinct count for now, but hey, at least then you know two different ways of counting something uniquely. Um, you can also see that I turned on the thousand separator. I think that looks much easier. And then we are just gonna now, you know, we have a calculation, we have the main calculation, and then we are now going to start to kind of create the skeleton and start to put stuff into, uh, into the canvas and create the dashboard. So if we go back, you can see, let's start with the header and then we can, we can go from there. Um, so I want to add, actually, you always want to select which color um, setup you want first, because if you do it midway and you, you change color schemes, you might actually create a change, which means you need to reformat a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna, uh, uh, I'm gonna select classroom first, and then I start to develop. So let's go in and we can call it customer overview dashboard. And I always like to have a nice header on top. I'll put you to 16 and I will put you there. Just give this a little bit of room and I will bold you out. Um, to give it a little bit of separation, I will go to the canvas background. And you have to excuse me if I'm clicking quick or fast. Um, I'm gonna try and slow down. But it's, you know, I'm so used to it, so it's just in the, in the fingers, but hopefully you can, you can still follow. Um, I have the customer overview properties. Ah, effects, yes, background. And then we will go on. No transparency on that. Great. We have a bit of separation now. It's easy to kind of, it, it gives it a nice look and, and some borders. Then we're going to insert a small graphic and an image, just this icon. And I, you know, I like to work as efficient as possible. So I'm going to click the previous thing I formatted, go to home, format painter. If I click that over the new element that I just took out, it gets, it, it inherits um, some of the formatting. And one of the things that I wanted to inherit is the background being white. So I'll drag this up here. We'll line you guys up. Okay, great. We have a nice little customer icon and you should actually be in front. So we'll go to format, um, bring it to the front. And there you go. We have a nice header. We are starting. Then I like to add the slicers on the left side. So let's add the ones that I know we can do. We can do, edu we can do education. We can do kids at home, teens at home, marital status, mar marital status, the revenue one. But these buckets we will add soon, not yet. They need some uh, logic, which is calculated columns. So let's start with adding one. That's actually, yes, a slicer. I'll line it up. Give it the right look and feel as I want. I want it to be this. I would like it to be a drop down. I'll click here. I would like to give it the same background. So I used the format painter. Great. And I will turn on the search bar. Great. And when I have one element formatted, I don't want to redo that formatting over and over. So I'm going to go control C, control V, paste it back in. Now all I have to do is I just have to change the field that is used in this one. So we'll go kid home flag. So uh, has kids question mark. I'll do the same, copy it, line it up, and then we'll go as teenagers. Nothing, you know, nothing crazy here. Control C, control V, and then we will at marital status. And what's great now is you have four new slicers, four new filters, they're all, you know, they look the same, they behave the same, and I don't have to redo it over and over, you know, those uh, those small the changes that I do uh, on each element. I'm gonna click the background one more time. It's a little bit too dark, so let's go to, I think that's a nicer, oh, 50%, a nicer shade. Great. So now I, ha I have some filters. Um, then um, I want to create um, the top part, which is the KPIs. Then I want to create the bottom stuff, which is also based on the, the calculation, but also with some logic. 
So let's start with uh, the overview um, text box. Text box. Drag that in. And I'm just going to write overview. Great. This time, the background was black and the text is white. You can play around with this just as you want to. It's totally, you know, up to you what colors you select and how you how you do it. This is just some ideas that I had. Great, we have that. Then we want to add these these elements under here. So let's start with the first one. We're going to add a card. We'll drag out a number of customers. I will line that up. I will click this element, inherit some of the some of the formatting so that it goes a lot quicker. Then I will add a donut chart. And you can see when you learn how to kind of reuse a lot of the, the formatting um, and the objects, it goes really, really quick. So we have education type. Um, so that will go on the details and then number of customers on the values, if I'm not mistaken. And I will get the background there. This one I want to play around with it. I want, I want to fix the, the formatting a little bit. So is it, uh, how do I get the title? It should be darker and detail labels. Nope. Actually detail labels, you can, you can play around with this if you want the category and the data value percentage of total I think that looks fine why did they have to change all of this formatting so actually it looks a lot nicer I just have to get used to it um, and then I'm gonna copy this paste it back in line it up move over one to the right and then I want kids at home flag so you can see it true false and then the last one is just it is um, teens at home so you can see uh, this is how I work in Power BI um, I create the elements correctly with the functions and how I want them to look and then I just reuse that logic um, and it goes you know just faster and faster um, the more you get used to that so I'm going to drag you over there since these two are just yes or no they don't need that much room you know I want to give this one a little bit more space let's go like this so I can get more space for the, the text and then if you want to you can actually if you go back then oh yeah, I forgot to I'm a bit of a stickler on the formatting and making everything looks nice um, but I think it's worth it in the long run um, if we go back to this when we had the detail label right now I have category and percentage of total if you go all detail labels now we can see uh, everything. And I'm gonna go display units, none, so I can see the full values. So now you can see the name of the different pies, you can see the percentage, you can see the values, um, which also helps um, alleviate some of the issues with pie charts sometimes, which is that the pies are, there's so many, this one doesn't have that many uh, slices and it's easy to differentiate them there now. Um, then I wanna add this details part. So I'm gonna go up, copy this, and I get two of those. Great. Then I'm going to go one down and then details. Now, let me see if I remember. I forget why I need to make this white. Give me one second. What is the size? 16? Nope. 14. Let's go 14. Details. I think I have it bold. That looks correct. Great. So now I want to make the three um, things at the bottom. So I'll show it here and then I'll redo it there. So what I've done for the age is I have taken the year of today. I figure out what is the year of today's date. The today function gives you today's date. The year wrapped around that gives you the year. If I take that minus the year birth of the customer, I figure out how old they are. So let's do that first. And Let's go new, uh, of course this is a calculated column the way I did it. So we'll go, we can call it customer 
age equals. So we'll go year is a function wrapped around a today's today function that gives me the year of today minus the what do I have birth year and that should give me the customer's age. Um, so you can see now I'm going to um, drag that in and I will use that now. I used it here, I believe, on this graph. So let's start with this one. So I have age, and then I also have age buckets. Let's also take a look at that. Now this one is a little bit different. This is a switch function. So this is gonna take a look at something. It's gonna say switch. And what I'm saying is, if something is true, then define it as this. And if it's not within those ranges, make it into other. So you can see I have customer overview. Um, and then I have, um, how did I do this? If the age is, okay, I think there's a typo here. I need to look at this. It should be, it should actually be a zero there and a, and a 40 there, but I'll, I'll, I'll fix that. It's not a big deal. So let's go to age buckets. Um, so I will, just copy this one. You can see, we'll call it customer age buckets. And then I need to have the same names as I'm copying this in. So you can go customer age. It should actually be, ah, oh, come on. There, and there we are. Last two. Great. And actually, this is also a small tip for you guys. There are online formatters for DAX. So let me see if I can find one for you guys. If you take a look here on DAXformatter.com, you can see it and you can, uh, you can just, sorry, you can just paste it and do it here. So I'm going to paste this code formats and it just uh, sorts everything out for me. So uh, paste that back in. So it should be, uh, greater than or equal to zero, greater than or equal to 40 and that's how it should be we actually probably don't even need this first condition when i think about it as long as you're less than or um, equal to uh, less than or equal to 39 you are a young adult but it's just for data quality i just want to make sure if there were something weird which made you younger than zero then i have it there anyways we add that so now we have a customer age and we have a customer age bucket so now we can create this this graph down here so what i'll do is i'm going to create a column chart like this we will take number of customers i have to try to remember this now and look at it over their customer ages and here you can see there's actually some outliers here so i'm going to correct that soon um, but i would click this one format paint over that one and to be able to separate which bucket they fall within that's why i'm going to add the buckets to the legend and then you can see by color it's much easier to see um and because of uh i believe because of these outliers it's, it's spreading it out quite a bit let's see what this one looks like that actually looks much better so we can we can use this type um, but i do want to clean out that those outliers because I doubt that some of those guys are at the stage like 122. Sure. Hey, if you're, if you're keep, keeping it going at that age, good for you, man. Um, but let's go to transform data and let's um, remove those guys. So now I can take a look at, you know, we have the birth year, but since I've added, let me think about this. Um, what is the easiest way to do this now? Let me see this. So it's got, it's gotta be these three guys. So I'll just say that you have to be born. Um, we can do it. Let's do number filters greater than, let's see. Uh, I mean, if I, you know, it's, it's a 1920, otherwise you're uh, over a hundred years. But we can just do, it's, it's greater than 1900. Um, so that will filter out a couple rows. 
um, I do a transformation, I close and apply that. I go back and now once again, it's gonna load the data, apply the, apply the logic and you can see now it has um, fixed this issue and now it's much easier to see the distribution. So let's do that. We will keep that like this. I remember that I had a table below just to kind of um, show it visually together with, with a table. So we can do that also. So I will add a table. I have the age buckets and number of customers. Do I have anything else? Nope. I will copy you, format painter to get the background as I like it, nice and white to separate it. And then we can drag it down. Let's just make sure. Okay, so that's, oh. We want it to be like this. So then we can drag you. you Gotta make sure that you're, that should be good. Okay, so you know, we're starting to recreate it. It looks nice. Um, the next one is number of customer by income buckets and age buckets. So I want to know what do you make and you know which uh, which uh, kind of age category do we put you in. So you can see the income buckets is more or less the same thing except that I am looking at um, values. Now you do want to notice one thing when you use text, you put these. Uh, don't know what it's called in English. I think we call it like goose uh, goose eyes in Norwegian. But anyways, um, but when it, when you're looking at values to categorize values, you use just um, um, uh, text without that that around. And we're using the switch and true function. And if 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 nothing fulfills the requirements that we are defining here, larger than equal to etc., it becomes blank. So let's start with the income buckets and I'm just going to copy this one because we're reusing the same uh, the same function and I want to show you guys something else let's do that income buckets I will copy this graph drag it over to the same side because we're going to reuse the customer age buckets but we're going to change it a little bit so I will add I'm going to make sure I do this right income buckets to there, so now we can see um, how many people are falling within the different income buckets. And I wanted to have it the other way because I think that's easier to read. And I also want to turn on some data labels. So we can do now we can see how many people are falling within the different buckets. Zero to 50K, 50 to 100K, the big ballers, 100K and more. One thing that I don't like about this is the sorting. I would want to sort that one goes first, second, and third. And then we look at it because that's how I would think about it naturally. Uh, and that's how I would kind of look at the uh, look at it um, when, I, when I look at the graph. Another thing I'm seeing is I'm seeing the legend title. We don't need that. So let's turn the title off. We get a little bit more room. Looks a little bit cleaner. But anyways, back to the income buckets sorting. That's the next thing. I have an income bucket sorter which is going to um, allow us to sort the income bucket column by whatever order we want it to be. So I'll, I'll, I'll copy paste it and I'll go through it with you guys. So you can see now we have the same function again, but this time we are storing this function in a variable. Um, not gonna talk too much about variables, but look it up very useful in Power BI. And then we take the same that we did to define the different types of categories, but then we are taking those category names and we are giving them an integer depending on which order I want it to be. So you can see income buckets for sorting is the variable up here, return, and then I'm using the same type of function, switch, true, and I'm getting it a one, two, and three. So now I have a sorting, bu uh, sorting bucket, a sorting column for our income, so now I can go to the income buckets and you can see here, I can go sort by column and notice what's gonna happen to the graph down there. It's gonna change now. Um, and we want to buy income buckets sort. So now when I go sort and it'll actually be by income buckets and I can choose if I want it ascending or descending. Um, and we can leave it like that. That's totally fine. The last thing that I'll do is I am creating a 
uh, recency of purchase um, category, uh, which is exact same function. Um, if you guys want to look more into the functions, I will add the Power BI file to my uh, to my GitHub um, with the data set, so you can go more in depth. But it's the same switch function. Um, and in sake of time, I'm just going to copy copy it in here. So we have those, and I need to I need the correct column name. So let's just go recency purchase. I believe that's a C in that, and not an S. I can see now in terms of spelling but I will survive so we just add those let's get to that and like this this is gonna be nice great I will copy that because I need to fix that uh, spelling in the in the sorting I copy the the graph and I will give it the same width. Then I will replace the income buckets with, I guess it'll be purchase recency. And we can look at purchase recency by which customer age do you fall into. Once again, you can see zero to 30, then I would want 30 to 60, then 60 to 90, and then 90 to 100. I'm gonna go back, purchase recency, sorting on the buckets. And I will create a new column. And you know, you, you just have to get through these steps, but the, you get some practice, it goes very quick. You can see now in the variable, it's giving me the same issue as before. So I'm just gonna go back to the purchase recency, uh, recency uh, measure or the calculated column, just copy it. And you can notice, you know, do notice, you get this little indicator. Notice that calculated columns, you know, it looks different. Um, then then measures but you'll pick this up as you get more and more into power bi um so we'll paste that i will oh we just need it there that corrects that we have a sorting we can go to the purchase recency buckets once again sort by column then we have a sorting then i go back in here i sort this by purchase regions recency buckets and I'm gonna go ascending I think that makes more sense in this one and we need some room here just make this nice and lined up come on ah. it's too much going on now clicking all over the place great so now I have the different graphs. I have created some buckets. The last thing is to add the last few slicers that I want to be able to actually navigate based on the different buckets I have created because they are actually part of the model as uh, as uh, as columns that you can use for filtering. So we'll create this. I will copy you. I'll go down. We can go customer age buckets. Now I'm thinking as I'm doing this. And then I will go here, income buckets. And of course, at last but not least, we have the purchase recency buckets. So we are more or less where we want to be. So now in this dashboard, I can easily go in. I can, you know, I can say, I want to look at a certain uh, education, graduation. I can see how many, uh, how many had that, what was, their age or how many customers falls within the different types of uh, adolescents, middle aged, old adults, young adults. I can see what do they make. I can also see how long ago did they actually purchase something from us. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. And as, as I said, with the slicers on the left, you can, you can go in and look at whatever you want now across a lot of different stuff. And we really just made one, one calculation and then just, use that and just thought about okay what, what what else can i do with the the data that i have to create different perspectives and use on this and what's also really good is you can go into the actual graphs and you can also click around there to compare different categories and who falls between um, different aspects of the data like i said i will add this file to the github with the data set um, you know, I know that I can speak a little bit fast. If I went too fast, you know, slow it down. 
um, try and build some of this stuff on your own um, play around you can use different colors you can use different ranges um, there's more things that you can do here um, than i've done but it definitely shows you what is possible with one measure and just some thoughts and preparation before you go into making the actual dashboard if you have made it this far then good job i really hope you learned something from the different concepts that i applied in this video as you can see you can get very far with some basic calculations and a clear focus from the beginning if you have any questions then reach out to me in the comments and if you want to learn more about power bi then check out some of the videos that you can see on the screen right now